In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Celery into a Django app. And the demo app that we're going to build with this is this image generation app. So the idea is you pass in a prompt and it will generate an image based off the prompt, but it's all going to run in the background. So if I want an image of a puppy and I hit generate, then I just have to wait for a few seconds and the image of the puppy will be ready. So generating an image takes about 10, 15 seconds. So once the time is up, I'll be able to see the puppy. So here we see the puppy. So we know that the image was generated properly in the background and it didn't interfere with the user using the app. So let's get into building this Django and Celery app. Okay, so to get started building the Celery example, let me show you what I have first. I have this Docker Compose YAML file, and this is just used to set up the Redis instance. So let me run Docker Compose up and put it in the background so Redis can be up and running by the time I need to use it as the broker. And then I have this index.html. So this is the final template to show the carousel with the different images. I don't want to write it in this video because it would take too long, so I made it beforehand. So these are the two things. So now with Redis up and running, let me go ahead and create a Python virtual environment. And I'll start it. And I need to install Django and Celery at a minimum, so I'll go ahead and install those two. And in addition to those, I'll need Redis, so pip install Redis. And I'll also need OpenAI for the image generation, so OpenAI. And also I have the Celery docs open because I will copy some code from here into my Django project. But first let me set up the Django project. So Django admin start project, we'll call this example and then dot to put it in the current directory. And I will go ahead and just migrate everything, migrate. And I'll create a new app, start app, I'll call it app. And let me add it to the installed apps. So let's go to settings.py. And then in here, I'll just put app. And now let me work on getting this index.html to appear in a view. So let's go to app and then views.py and just create a view called index. Takes in the request and it's going to return render index.html. I need to create a templates directory templates inside of app, and then I'll just move index.html into the templates directory. And looking at this, I need requests as the first argument to render, and then I can create a URL for it. So I'll go to urls.py, I'll get rid of this, and I'll say from app.views import index, and, and then on the empty path, I'll add the index function, and we'll just call it index. So this should be enough to view it. So Python manage.py run server. And let's just make sure it appears. So 127001 for 8000. Okay, so this is what the template looks like right now. There's actually the carousel under this when there are images, but because I don't have any images yet, we don't get to see the carousel. We just see the text input. So let's go back here. And what we need to do next is we need to set up Celery. So the idea with this is we just need to copy and paste some code from the Celery docs into our example folder here, so the, the project folder, and then we can get Celery up and running. So let's go to the Celery docs and then go down to Django from this page and first steps with Django, and it's going to give you some code to copy, right? So first we need to create a file called celery.py and copy all of this stuff in there. So let's copy that. And in here, we'll create celery.py. Paste this in. And then we need to change project here, so PRRJ, to the name of our project. In this case, it's example. So example here and example here. Next, we can go back to the documentation and then we want to copy and paste this code into the dunder init file for our project. So here, just copy and paste and it just brings in the Celery app. And that should be it. So two files to copy. And then what needs to be done is we need to make sure that Celery works. So in a new tab, I will go ahead and open it and I'll start my virtual environment. 
And to start Celery, let's do Celery A and then the name of the project. So example, and then the word worker because we want to create a Celery worker. Then dash L for login and then info is the login level that we want and then hit enter. And then we can see that the Celery debug task is appearing. So this is defined in Celery.py. So a task here, uh, but as we can see, it's trying to connect to a RabbitMQ transport instead of our Redis one, which we'll fix in a second. And then we see all these errors. So Celery is working with Django. We just need to tell it where our broker is. So let's go to settings.py. And at the bottom, or really anywhere that you think is appropriate, we can add the Celery broker. So Celery broker underscore URL. And then this is going to be Redis localhost and then the default port which is 6379 and this just comes from the docker compose 6379 here so let's go ahead and try to start it again and now we see no errors so we still see the same debug task but here under transport we have localhost 6379 so for results we see that is disabled so we want to have the results be the same as the broker meaning we want to use Redis for the results as well. So we can do celery result backend, and then I'll just copy this and paste it. And then if I start up celery again and go up here, we see the results is now on the same Redis instance as the broker transport. So that's all set up properly. So now let's make sure that we can call a task. So let's go to our index and import the task that we have. So it's inside of celery. So let's do from example.celery import, and then the name of it is debug task. And then we can call this debug task inside of our view here. So we can do debug task as a function, but because this is celery, remember we have to do dot delay or apply async, but delay is the easiest one. So debug task dot delay in here. So every time I load this page, it will call the task. So let's go back to the browser and then just refresh and then go here to celery. And then we see that it called the debug task. So it succeeded uh, very quickly because all the debug task does is print out some information. It prints out the request information, which we can see here in yellow. Okay, so now that Celery is set up properly, let me close this and dunder init and settings, and let's get into the example. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a model to store the image information. So I'll go to models.py and I'll create a new model called image and it's going to inherit from models.model and it's going to have a few fields. So it's gonna have a URL field, it's gonna have a prompt field to store the prompt that the user types into the text field. And then finally I can have like a created at, just so I can know when the user created this. So I'll start with the created at first. So this is gonna be a date time field and we'll do auto now add equals true. So that will automatically get generated for me. For the prompt, it's just going to be a text field. So models.text field. And then for the URL, it's gonna be a URL field. So URL field, just like that. So I'll go back to my other terminal and I will make migrations. And then I will migrate this. So python manage.py migrate. And now that we have that, I wanna create a task that will add something to this image model. So I wanna store the image information in the database. So I need to store whatever the prompt is, and I need to store the URL that is generated by the OpenAI API. So let me go into app, and I'll create a new file called tasks. And this is where I wanna put my celery task. So first what I'll do is I'll import something called share task from celery. So from celery import, share task share task is a decorator that we can use on any function that we want to declare as a celery task so i'll do share task here as a decorator and then the function is going to be generate image and it's going to take in some prompt so let me just put pass here so i can finish the imports so this is the basics of the task we're creating it's the generate image function and we decorated it already so now I want to import from OpenAI. So from OpenAI, import OpenAI so I can call the API. And I know I'm gonna need the image model. So from.models import image, and that should be it. 
So now we can go back to the generate image function. So here, what I want to do is I want to call the open AI API. So to do that, I need to start by instantiating a client. So this will allow me to send the requests and then I'll go ahead and send the request. So it's going to return something into a response and I'll do client.images.generate. And then in here, I need to pass in the information. So the model that I'm going to use to generate the images is going to be dolly three. So dolly three. And then I need to pass the prompt. So the prompt is just going to be the prompt that's passed into the function here. I need to set the number of images that I want. I just want one and then the size. So the size I want 1024 by 1024. Okay. So now the response should have an image after some amount of time. And what I can do after this is I can create a new record in the image table. So image that objects dot create URL is going to be response dot data. And then we want the first thing in there because it's only one image and then dot URL. So that takes the URL and then we want to save the prompt as well, which is just taking the prompt from the function call. So this should be it for the task. So what I can do is I can stop celery and I can restart it to make sure I can see the task that I just created. So if I go here under task, we see I have generate image in addition to that debug task that we used before. Okay, so to call this, let's go back to views and we have a form. So let me bring up the template. We have a form that takes in a prompt and it has a name prompt and then just by pressing the generate button, it will submit. So we need to make this view handle both get and post requests. So let me remove the debug task dot delay because we don't need that anymore. And I'll just remove it from here. And what I'll do is I'll say if request dot method is post, I want to process the form. So we can say prompt equals requests dot posts. And then in posts we have prompt. And let's just print out the prompt for now and then return redirect should be redirect back to the index. So let's import redirect and let me make sure this is working before I bring in the, the task. So let's run server again and let's go here and generate an image, right? So let's hit generate and then we see we get this error CSRF verification failed. So what we can do is inside of our template, we can add the CSRF token. So let's just add it here, CSRF token. And then let's try that again. So generate an image, hit generate, and now it redirects. And here we see the text from the prompt generate an image. So now what we can do is we can bring in the task. So from dot tasks import generate image, and instead of printing the prompt, we can simply call generate image with the prompt here. So first, let me show you what this looks like as a regular function. So I'm not going to use the celery functionality. I'm just going to run it uh, without calling delay and we can see how long it takes. So let me go here and let's do a picture of a computer store. All right. So let's generate this. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's loading right now. And the app is just waiting on the OpenAI API to return. So normally generating the image takes like 10, 15 seconds. So as a user, I have to sit here and wait for this to complete before I can do anything. And that's obviously not what we want, but it's done now. Okay, so we should have an image in the database. So let's look at that before we make generate image into a celery task. So let's do from dot models import image and then let's create a context dictionary. And in here it's going to have images and then we can do image dot objects dot all and then we can pass that to the template. OK, so now let's take a look. So if I load the page, we see a picture of a computer store. It looks kind of like um, a Windows store. I see the Windows wallpaper there. So now let's make the generate image a celery task. So all we have to do for that, because it's already decorated by shared task, is we can just add dot delay here. And now it will be called with celery. So let me just restart celery just to make sure I don't have any issues here. OK, so that looks good. So now let's try to generate another image. So let's say um, 
an image of an island and hit generate. And we see it returns immediately, but I only have one image here and I can refresh as much as I want. If we go back to the terminal with Celery running, we see that it received a task and then it ran the request and we see it took 11 seconds. So if I go back here in refresh, I should be able to see the other image. And yeah, I see the image of an island here. So by using Celery, I was able to make the task run in the background. The user was able to continue running the app. And once the task completed, then the database was updated. And then once the user refreshed the page again, they can see the new image in the database. So as you can see, it's really useful to have Celery in your projects, especially when you have things that are long running or things that are unreliable that you don't want to interfere with a user using your app. So if you have anything like this, then just going through the steps that we went through in this video should be enough to get your Celery up and running in your project so you can avoid all the issues of not using something like Celery. So if you're interested in learning more about Celery with Django, I have other videos on my channel that cover it. So check those out if you want to learn more.